Hi, sweetie. <laughs> What are you doing? Did I scare you? Well, hi guys. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to Lonely Sack Road and Overland. And as you guys gonna see in the title of the video, it's a Q&A. So I posted uh, on the community tab and I ask you guys to ask questions because I can answer them right here in the video so everybody knows our story or my story, right? Because if one subscriber, one person is asking a question and I answer, it's getting lost in the translation and that's all it's gonna be. So, let's get into it. And before I get into it, I wanna say something else, my friends. I had a few comments in the comment section somebody from richmond was telling me that they need help um, i had a beautiful lady from langley asking me twice on the comment section that she needs help with her diesel heater langley or richmond langley so my friends that's the only way i can do it you guys go in the description, you scroll all the way down in the bottom, that is my email, reach out to me, send me an email, send me your info, so I can get in touch with you. Because even if I comment and I said, yeah, no problem, I wanna help you guys, you know, it's just not happening because I don't know how to contact you, right? So, now that's that it's clear, let's get to it. How are you, sweetie? All good, all good. but... I want to say thank you okay. to, from Hawaii. To who? Uh, Rambling Rakatee! <laughs> it's RR. That is initial of our son. <laughs> yes, the Rambling Rakatee. Aloha! Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. We appreciate that. We really you know? appreciate it. I love it. But yeah, did I guys you. tell you? Yeah. This is going to be our favorite on the wall. That's yeah. for the 2024, right? Yes, that's right. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, we really appreciate it. Okay, Papa. Thank you very much. <laughs> and then uh, before I forget, uh, okay. um, this one okay. is from Ariel Sky. Uh, he's asking you, where did you get your uh, mini stove? Okay, <laughs> so let's get this uh, cleared out, guys. So my wood stove, my mini, so the wood stove is designed and built here in Canada. I believe the company is located in Montreal. It's called the Cubic Mini. Mm. I'm going to put it in the description. I'm going to put their website <clears throat> and then you guys can check it out. But like I said, you know, they are not cheap, but they are awesome units. And I was actually just browsing because I wanted to buy something I was browsing their uh, website and actually I was surprised that actually the prices came down. So if you just buy the stove or you buy your own piping like I did because I bought the stove from them and I bought the tray, I actually even a shield but I didn't like the shield so I sold the shield but I bought the tray and just the, the, the wood stove and I got my uh, piping from... Uh, USA from Home Depot. That's right. It was designed for a pallet stove and it fits perfectly and it's double walled, insulated. It never gets hot. I can put my hand on the on the pipe and it's never uh, that hot to say, oh my God, it's burning my hand. So there you have it. So that's the end of the wood stove. Okay. Now. The first question <laughs> from Laura Lee and uh, is Cuba Bali. What's your story on how you and Leia got together? I would love to see her coming along on some of your trips. Look like she is an amazing cook. Okay, and then for Scuba, that was my question as well. Okay. Thank now, you for that. Compliment. Now let me say something here. <laughs> and then I let you continue. <laughs> you guys, honestly, I would love Leah to be with me full time <laughs> heads down no questions asked because we did it many times come on 
we did it many times. We used to travel down in the uh, March spring break, you know, take four weeks, five weeks, travel down in, south in the USA, you know, we went as deep as uh, California. We've been in Arizona and Flagstaff. We did uh, Moa, Utah. We travel a lot in Bath. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's fun. I mean, like, don't get me wrong. You know, it's okay if you are like a lone wolf and you like to be alone, it's fine. I'm not that type of person. So when I'm alone, I'm I'm just going uh, nuts, crazy. You know what I mean? It's it's no fun. And when you are, you know, with your uh, love, with your partner, obviously, you know, you have a better, an awesome time, and uh, you can enjoy each other's company, right? Now, what's the story of how we met? I let Leah le uh, elaborate on that because. I kind of forgot <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you. <laughs> no, yeah. we met uh, through website uh, tag.com. Uh, my cousin is um, getting married with a retired soldier, and then she's the one who signed me up in back. And then I didn't know about it, not until I opened my emails, and then I said that, holy cow. I said, who are this, you know? And I don't know nothing about computer, those gadgets, because all I had to do before is to work, 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 work. And, and work then, again. And work again. <laughs> and then uh, I said that, uh, you know what, I'm, I'm too tired of this, so many emails, you know. And then uh, I don't get the use. Uh, so I said that uh, I'm going to close this, uh, you know, website that is uh, tag.com. And then uh, I only live probably three or five, uh, you know. Uh, three girls and then two guys that uh, who's very nice to me and then including Lorraine during that time and then I mentioned to him that I'm gonna close that website you know I don't want to continue doing that and then yeah he asked uh, my phone number and where I live and then I didn't know that uh, we live both here in BC and then he asked me he told me that he lives in Langley I live in Burnaby and then we decided that, uh, you know, we're going to meet each other. But it won't happen right away. It probably, it take a while before yeah. we met, uh, you know. So it, it uh. took a while. That I remember when, you know, one time I texted you and I said, Hey, what's going on? I said, you know, can we go out for a coffee or this and that? And she's like, no, you know, I'm busy and, you know, like... I'm scared. I really have a son and I, you know, like... Uh, <laughs> this and that and i said hey don't worry about it you know like i'm okay with kids you know i don't need kids you know but i said at least we can go out and you know have a coffee and you know meet in person right uh -huh. so she's like well you know one of my friends gonna have a barbecue and it was somewhere in burnham in the park i forgot the... near to metro town yeah you know? near to metro town yeah, and she's like, welcome. if well, if you want to come, you mm -hmm. know, we'll be out there and, uh, you know, we can uh, meet them. Mm -hmm. So, and obviously. That's, and that's how it started. And that's how it started. Yeah. Obviously, I went. I was yeah. like, like a Speedy Gonzalez. <laughs> and uh, I went there and uh, we had a few pictures. And I think uh, I still have one of those pictures <laughs> that I was hugging her from behind. <laughs> Yeah, and that's right. I could feel her body <laughs> shaking. <laughs> and I said, hey, listen, don't what? worry. You're not like, I'm not a criminal or anything <laughs> like that. You need to calm down because I can feel you are shaking. Like, what's wrong? Don't be scared, you know? And then, you know, we start to, you know, seeing each other more mm -hmm. often, going out for a coffee and then... Uh, Every weekend in fact. Then we went to yeah. uh, visit Bouchard Gardens in uh, yeah. Victoria and then we traveled down in the States and all that. Yeah, he showed me the beauty of BC. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's and how then, we started. Yeah. And then, <laughs> uh, you know, the rest is history, you guys. I mean, you know, we've been together now. 2008. Yeah, I'm enough. still saying, I still argue with you, <laughs> it was late 2007. No. 
2008, Baba, because, uh, okay. you know, uh, more likely it's just like March, because okay. I said, because uh, during that time, uh, I said that I'm going to finish my first contract here. I came here as a contract worker, and then I said I'm going to finish this, and then I want to go home. Yeah. Right? Uh, yeah. And then you want to yeah. go home as well into your country, and then yeah, I want to go back. Well, <laughs> actually, I was. Yeah. So you because, just came back. Yes, huh, because know? what what I did, mm. I took a, I took a two year leave of absence oh. from my work, uh -huh. and that was in two thousand five. And you're right, yeah. two thousand seven, two thousand eight. Yeah. You are because right. I arrived here two thousand seven. So I yeah. took a two year leave of absence. Mm -hmm. I sent a car to Europe, mm -hmm. and I went and I spent two years there with my family, my mom and dad. They had a farm. Well, they had the farm recently we sold it, but mm. I went there and I was thinking that, well, you know, everything in Europe is changing and the communist is over and, you know, I'll go back there and maybe being with my family because my brother and my nephew, my nieces are still living in Hungary and in, in nearby Budapest. I thought, well, I'll go there and, you know, I'll make a life for myself there with my family, right? Well, I'll tell you guys, you know, yes, it's beautiful in Europe and life is awesome and all that kind of stuff. But I went there and I felt like a foreigner in my own country. Everything changed. And then the bureaucracy and all the paperwork. And if you want to start a business, it's going to take about six to eight months. And it's going to take about thirty to 40,000 euros to put it in and all that and all the runarounds and i said you know what i don't think this is for me and then i said to myself no you get back there because you love canada canada is for me it's like heaven now i know canada is changing too and has <laughs> other issues but still it's a really really good country to live in you know i hate politicians i hate politics i don't want to get involved in that so that's the story of me and leah <laughs> so we both stay here exactly. i'm supposed to go i'm supposed to go home back home in the philippines because i said that it's hard to start a new life here in canada by myself <laughs> but because of my husband <laughs> We have a very good life, right? We have a good life. Yeah. yeah. And he accepts me as I am. Wholeheartedly. Well, yeah, well, that's, that's, that, that's what I'm telling you. So that's people, why you know, I like, stay here in Canada. You know, like, sometimes people say, like, you know, they look at, you know, on the outside, you know, and they judge you from the outside. That's not what you see on the outside. It's what's in, in, in your soul, in your heart, what you feel from inside out that's uh, that's a person to me you know not like oh you know oh she's like six foot tall and skinny legs and this or that or you know I'm she does skinny that. Before, i know sweetie but i'm not talking about that i'm just saying you know like you know sometimes people they just look at and try to judge somebody from the outside picture when you know they don't even realize who that person is but anyway yeah that's we how are we together yeah you know and yeah. i said to leah that you know i don't want to get married <laughs> okay that's a good question patty so i have a three inch wall insulation it's very expensive but is the best you can put in so what i did i put a three inch insulation and then i have the wood planks that covers up Yes, the same goes on the ceiling. So the AMBO comes with a 2x2 two two aluminum tubing all around. I put an extra inch wood on the tubing so I can have that thermo barrier. I put the insulation, the thermo barrier on it, and then I put my uh, wood planks up on the ceiling. The same goes on the wall. Now the floor, no, I did not insulate because I checked the floor and has a two inch foam insulation, has a full sheet of aluminum on the bottom, so it's sealed, no water can come in. And then it has a three quarter inch plywood on it. 
and then it has a rubber mat glued onto it. Now what I did, I put uh, like a laminated floor on top of that, which is made of uh, some kind of plastic material. So it's water resistant and all that kind of stuff just for the looks. But we never had issues with the winter time to be cold because we also wear like slippers mm -hmm. inside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I have the diesel heater going on plus the wood stove. Leah is complaining, <laughs> open the hood because it's too hot it's in too here. It's too hot sometimes. It's, it's like some, a sauna. Yeah, that's why right. it's sauna. But yeah. uh, yes, that's, uh, that's the insulation. And thank you, Patty, for the question. Okay. And I have from Bob, Bob Till Tracker 2521. Okay, is he's wondering if the Express Savannah 2500 4.8 option is a good starter van. I know it is an underpower compared to the other option, but was interested in the longevity of the engine and trans overall. Okay, Bob. From Bob. Yeah. So actually, you know, I, I tell you my two cents and then we elaborate a little bit on your particular question with the Savannah or the GMC because they are obviously both the same. So just so we make it clear, there is no one van, it's perfect. And one has a lot of issues and this is the best one to get. They are all good. It's it, it depends of the of the van when you purchase it if it was serviced how many kilometers or miles has on it you know was it abused was it used as a commercial somebody didn't care and it just beaten up or if you know the history that let's say joe bought this van from brand new and he owned it and he take good care of it and you have the option to buy it, you know you're gonna have a good buy. No matter if it's Ford, Chrysler, Chevy, you know. But now to elaborate on this particular van that you are asking, I think the Chevy, it's a pretty good deal. It's the 4.8, yeah, maybe it's a little bit underpowered, but I, in my personal opinion, I think they are really reliable. You know, I used to own a GMC Savannah back in like 1996 till like 2000. And uh, from my personal experience, I never had an issue with it. But this is the kicker. It's very important. You buy this van, you bring it home, please do the engine oil, do your transmission fluid, do your rear differential, and you'll be happy. Because you never know, like, you know, don't just buy the car and it's running and it's all good and let's just drive it. No, just do that, inspect the brakes. And you know, it's a good practice when you buy something like used, maybe take it to a, a reliable shop and have an inspection on it. So you know what to expect, you know, when you get home, because you don't want to take it back home and you find out that, oh, you're going to need ball joints, you're going to need brakes, you're going to need a new exhaust system because it's all rotten up, you're going to need this and that, because, that would be pretty painful unless you are mechanically inclined and you are willing to buy something cheap like I did, you know, and then just uh, build it up from there, you know, put uh, some labor and put some money in it and then you have what you build. I hope this answers your question. Thank you. Okay. I have Jamie. Jamie HI9VK. I love how you got your band. I think it's so cozy with the wood burner. Could you say how you put it all together? Please, 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 please. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to, okay. Thank you, Jamie. Mm. So here is the deal. I 
<laughs> took a lots of pictures when I was doing actually my ammo. Mm. And uh, I have to see if I can dig them out, if I can find them, you know, when I did pretty much everything. So I was building one for myself and it was almost, uh, say, 50% done. And I had uh, somebody came and said, hey, I want to build an ambo and I want one. And I want it in a hurry. So I said, okay, well, let me look to see what I can find on the market. And in that particular time, I was looking at <laughs> the market and I could not find anything for two weeks. And then this is what she said, listen, mm -hmm. I don't have the time to wait. Mm -hmm. If you can find something, I want to get this one. <laughs> so I sold her that van, that Ambo. I finished it up and uh, I was actually working on the van three or four weeks. And this Ambo that I have now, it came up on the market. It was very close to me. And in the same time, I was going back to Europe, back home because my sister passed away. So I was in a rush. I went, I looked at the van. It had some issues. I said to the guy, okay, I'm gonna buy it. I'm gonna send my buddy, gonna bring you the cash, the draft check, and he's gonna drive it home because I'm leaving tonight. I Like tonight, tonight, I was going to Europe. So anyway, I went to Europe and when I came back home, here was this beautiful Ambo and i said okay it's time to go hunting honey you remember <laughs> so i changed the oil on it i dropped the transmission fluid on it and then i hooked up my uh, nissan and i hit the road and i did 700 kilometers and boy i was smiling all the way here it was so sounding so nice driving so beautifully and then when I came back from hunting, I stripped it all out, fully stripped it out. And then I started my build. And if I'm going to have those pictures, I would definitely put up like a little short story, how this ambulance became my cozy cabin on wheels, yeah. right? With the we good changed stove. a lot. <laughs> yeah, we did. I did modify it a couple of times. I wasn't yeah. happy because we had a, a full shower set up that it yeah. was taking up so much space yeah. like mm -hmm. that space to use it like once maybe twice a week or sometimes once a month so that's you why want to be a luxury <laughs> well not really luxury but you know like just to be comfortable to enjoy yourself you know and don't have like that space sitting you know because when you are living in a small footprint you want to maximize every little inch you can in every little corner that's you know so okay. that's how it became so we have a question for from anders crow do you have more mechanic work now than ever to keep you busy since your channel grew so well ah thank you for you guys <laughs> mm, yeah well you There's know in no, no. Well, thanks for the question, and mm -hmm. let me answer you something. Mm -hmm. YouTube actually holds me back from doing what I'm doing. Yeah. And that's the honest truth, you guys, because <laughs> mm -hmm. I have I built my clientele on trust. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, I service all clients all the time. Sometimes I refer people even before YouTube, I was referring people to one of my buddy's shop, you know, because I was like so busy that I could not handle it. And sometimes to be pretty frank and honest with you guys, I want to take a week off. I'm just going to not book anything for that week. Mm -hmm. That's the beauty, you know, mm -hmm. because if I want to go in the back country or camping or just, you know, laying on the beach somewhere or go back home to Europe. That's the nice thing because I can just say, no, I'm not taking nobody. And if somebody <laughs> calls me and they have an emergency, I always refer, I have a 
good buddy of mine has a good reputable shop and I say well you guys go over there and he will take care of it yeah. you know but uh, to elaborate a little bit <laughs> with the YouTube <laughs> it takes <laughs> twice as long okay because now you have to one one man show mm -hmm. you have to set up the camera you go mm -hmm. grab your tool you do this yeah. and then you change the camera angle put it yeah. back there you come out again back and forth back and forth and by the time two three hours go i exercise so much that i'm in pain by up and down up and down and moving all this i have to book myself too papa <laughs> please can we go there because before i always pull him come on let's go you know, you have to take me here and there because I'm not driving. Mm -hmm. But now I cannot do that uh, because, uh, you know, at the end of the day, he need to uh, do the editing, you know, do this. And then there's some job that he need to do it, you know. Uh, yeah, so, YouTube takes a long takes, um, time you know, out of our life. Yeah, even me. Filming <laughs> it, one, it's wrenching, okay. Yeah. And then I'll give a good discount yeah i really give a good discount to you guys that's right and i'll try to make as minimum as possible like somebody comes in and complains you know i go right to the root find the root of the problem and just fix that little problem instead of throwing parts telling someone that yeah you need bar joints you need this you need that you need that and give them a four thousand dollar you know ticket price no, I just do it <laughs> like I go and I said, okay, this will fix your issue. Hmm. Bam, done, 700, 800 dollars yeah. later, there you go, you know, and I film it. That's it, you know. And then um, after filming it, you gotta come and put it all together and do all the editing and all that, and it takes time. Yeah. Editing is not happening like this, you know, and I am still learning still and learning. I have no no idea hmm. how to edit or well i used to be back in the day yeah, like 20 years ago not... but then you drop all that yeah, and it's... you forget about it and you're out of one industry for 20 years and you try to get into it it's a whole different ballgame everything changed you know but anyway you know we are here we are doing it we're still learning and i have a couple of nice subscribers that they give me a couple of good tips yeah especially mm -hmm. the what was his name? Hold on. I, I don't want to hold, hold on. No, don't. No. There's a lot of you guys that, uh, you know, comment, uh, sending emails to my husband. And we really appreciate it, you know, that um, willing to help. <laughs> Back road nomad. I, am not, I said nomads. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Back you so much. Thank you so I much. I really appreciate <laughs> all your, your input. <laughs> no, no, he give me, I show you, he yeah, give yeah. me some really nice stuff. And, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I really appreciate it. And hopefully we can do some kind of work together in the future, yeah. you know. Yeah. And then, um, yeah. No, there's a lot of them, you know. Um, Mike Hansen, you know. Um, lots of guys. Yeah, lots yeah. of them, you know. You know. Um, but all this, you know, people want to understand it changes your life in many different perspectives because now, not only that, be, because I, me personally, I like to answer every email or a anybody that sends me, hey, I have a problem. Yeah. And I have, I have a lots of those guys. Some days I have like two hours that I'm on the emails and <laughs> writing back and forth, answering, you know, mm. you guys somebody has an issue hey you know like i think i blew my rear main seal and <laughs> hmm, what a surprise hmm. what a surprise let me see because i think i have that email here too uh, let me just find his uh... huh. yeah we still have lots of questions here <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, maybe I deleted those. Yeah. I'm not sure. Okay. Can we pass now? Yes, we can. Okay. This is from Sherry. Sherry D79. I'm interested in your background since I know you are Hungarian. Where did you grow up and was 
it like as a kid interesting <laughs> Oh, what is that? So, I can hear. Yeah, somebody is backing Where? in oh. here, turning around. Oh! So, it's okay, sweet. Somebody Did just turned around. No. No, somebody oh. just turned around. So, anyway, Shelly, let's get to the point. Yes, I grew up in Hungary and uh, I had a pretty good childhood. I cannot complain. I mean, I really enjoyed life. I was an outgoing, outdoorsy, and back in the day, we, when I was like, I don't know, five or six or seven, we didn't have much like television or all this. It was only the propaganda was going, so we didn't care about all that. So we was always out in the back country playing. We had a big farm where uh, I spent most of the time and I, I did uh, work in the farm, you know, because we all had to pinch in as kids, you know, to help my parents because not only that we had the farm, they also worked, they had their uh, regular uh, eight to five job too. And, you know, we as a kids, we had to make sure that, you know, we take care of the sheep, the chickens, the dogs, the geese, and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, a little bit of yard yard work and all that but no i had a really corn <laughs> corn grapes, grapes <laughs> peaches apples no we had all that you know yeah i really enjoyed i really had there. a good uh, yeah. good life i cannot complain you know mm -hmm. i did uh, uh, i did uh, lots you of know, things you know, in, and in the, the life yeah. you know and i really enjoyed it but I wanted something different. I didn't like to be told what to do, <laughs> when, and you know, what you can say and what you cannot say. So I said, okay, let's move somewhere else. And I ran away anyway, and that's how I got to Canada. I went through Greece and from Greece, I emigrated into, you know, London, Ontario. I spent, I think four or five years there. And then that's how I got here to BC and, you know, here I am today, and uh, I came to Canada in 1988, and it was November 17. November 17, I landed in Pearson Airport in Toronto, from Greece, Athens, and I was 23 years old. <laughs> okay, <laughs> our next question is from Tall Guy 203. Where did you get your experience as a mechanic? And uh, are you retired? <laughs> Am I retired? Uh, <laughs> Semi-retired. Semi <laughs> uh, you know, semi-retired. Uh, would I always be semi-retired or would I be like fully retired? Well, I don't know if I can sit still in one place. That's my problem and that's what my dad did all his life. My dad was 82 years old when he finally said, okay, that's it, I'm retiring. Where did you get your uh, experience you know, as a mechanic? So, I grew up on a farm, like I said, you guys, you know, m my dad had a couple of tractors, <laughs> you know, and back in the day, while back home, there wasn't stores that you can walk in and buy the part you need. You had to be creative and you had to be really visionary to create. So whenever my dad, uh, was working in the summertime, plowing the farm and doing all that stuff. And in the winter time, we was working on the tractor. So he took everything apart, service, new bearings, do this and that. And then, you know, like if the shaft was worn out, he welded up the shaft and by hand, he worked at everything to become perfect. And that's where I learned most of it because I was very intrigued, you know, watching my dad creating something from nothing and I said wow that's interesting so let's do it you know and then you know that's how I started I was uh, always pulling. curious yeah I was curious mm -hmm. and then you know like I was like 16 17 I said well let's uh, rebuild this engine dad you know so let's pull it all apart and put it all together and it was fascinating to see how things are working and I was always a, a problem solver you know obviously I um, I did uh, 
a technical college and then I went to, I did a little bit of police academy, well, a little bit, I was two <laughs> years in there, you know, and then what a mistake that was because it wasn't for me. It's, no. it's not for you? <laughs> no. You meant for being a mechanic. Yeah. Right? And then, you know, then I came to Canada and um, I was in the aircraft industry for uh, many, many years. But, 18 years? Uh, yeah, but in the side, I was always doing mechanics, yeah. Yeah. you know, because that was my passion. And that's why I tell people sometimes, you know, if you are just in it for the money... Uh, You're not happy. No. You have to be passionate what yeah. you do, you know, and that's, that's how you can do, like, really difficult jobs and you make them look easy and you are happy and you are not swearing and throwing things and you know all that kind of stuff right because if you do that might as well just quit what you're doing don't do it that's right just do something that makes you happy that's right right yes. so there you have it i don't know if this answered your question but i think so <laughs> <laughs> there you go thank we, you we have interesting one here well you guys you know <laughs> buckle up let me go grab a bottle of water, sweetie. You keep uh, no, reading. No, no, no. I gotta keep get it. No, it's okay. Let me go grab a bottle of water because okay. we're gonna be here a couple of hours. <laughs> this one. Which is that one? Someone is special. Yeah. Okay. But she always, always, you know, put nice word to us. Oh. She love us. <laughs> If she loves us, this couple, Ramblin Rakiter. Oh, okay. Hello. We already, um, probably you hear it's a part of our story. Okay. If you have more questions, you can ask next time. But okay, to elaborate. And then, uh, what is your favorite cookie? Oh, He's a cookie monster. <laughs> yes. You know, he loves any kind of sweet. Not for me. Yeah. Just probably once in a while, I'm going to have a sweet, but that's it. But... This boy? This man. Mm, if I don't a have, monster. If I don't have any sweet at home, you know what he going to ask from me? Mama, I don't have any sweet. What did you bring for me for today? Like okay. Uh, so I'm going to make it sure yeah. that before we run out of chocolate or cookie or whatsoever here, I need to bring one box, uh, you know, from work. And you guys, you never run out. Yes. Uh, if you want to know the honest truth, if I want to <laughs> go and I bring, I have a bowl like this and it's loaded. Yes. You know? It's variety. Yeah. And the same in my bus <laughs> when I go in there. I always have all the sweets in packed in there, like mm -hmm. everywhere nicely, you know. So if I decide that tonight I'm going to go out and I'll be on the road for three days, I'm not going to start because I have all the food and all the cookies and chocolates yes. and you name it. Yep. And then uh, for his dessert sometimes, uh, you know, I don't have cake. And then, uh, you know, he going to ask me, I don't have any dessert here at home. <laughs> so, I have to get, you know, gonna make some leche plan, you're gonna make some cassava cake, you know, or what is that? Uh, some, something that I make it, uh, you know, Hungarian dessert. Hungarian dessert? Polochinta? <laughs> Not polochinta, just like the donut. Oh. How do you call that? In your. Franco. Oh. I have to make that one. Oh my good lord. Yeah. But anyway, okay. let me just okay. elaborate a little bit oh, here. Okay. People probably think, what? Lawrence eats so much sweets Lawrence. and all that. <laughs> and he's like this. <laughs> well, yes, guys. Okay. Because Leah can tell she's uh, <laughs> right here. I don't eat big portions. Yeah. I eat really, really small portions. Yeah. You know, because if I would eat like, you know, Anybody else like, okay, I sit down and I eat a normal portion. I'll be three times the size I am today. I gotta get your... You know? Where are you going? I gotta get your water. Okay. Okay. If you, could, if you could have any superpower, what would it be? Sunrise? 
Uh, hold on. Okay, let me let me. Uh, I, okay, let me elaborate on that. If I would have a superpower, what would that be? I would make this world a better world to be in it. <laughs> I would make to make sure that everybody gets along with everybody, and it would be peace everywhere. Come on, people, smarten up. Why can't you just live with your neighbor and enjoy life? You know. Why we need to kill each other and do all these bad things? That's what I would do, my friend. Now, let me just tell you, sunrise or sunset? Well, can you pick? You are asking me just like left or right? Which one I like better? Well, I like the left one and I like the right one too, equally. Now, I love sunrise, it's very beautiful, but I also love sunset. They both are magnificent and they have their own beauty in their own ways. Thank you, my friend Rocketeer. I really appreciate that, my friend. So, there you have it. Okay, uh, the next question. Is... You guys maybe should grab a coffee or a tea or something, you know, because <laughs> I'm the tea now. this Q&A is going <laughs> to be for a while, you know. Okay. But I figure, you guys, you know, it's better to do this because then anybody can see what's going on. Because if I just answer somebody, ask me a question in the in the comments and I answer that, it's, it takes time to it, it get la lost yes, and yeah. you know, then I'll get the same question over yeah. and over and over, you know. Okay, this one is from Black Ship Charge, 7297. What do you think about the 6.4 liters? 6.4 liters, mm -hmm. what? I don't know, that's the only answer. What do you think about the 6.4 liters? That's it. 6.4 can be anything, but... From Black Ship. Yeah. Well, Black Ship, I don't know what are you referring to. Are you referring to a diesel or a gas? You know? Are you referring to a Ford? But uh, like I said, you guys, you know, there is no one engine it's best and the one it's uh, the worst you know every single engine like manufacturer if you look at it you know like the power stroke the cummins the duramax the mercedes they all have corks my friend it's not like one it's perfect and it's the best ever and it goes forever no it's not they all have little corks here and there but it all depends how you maintain and all that kind of stuff because just think about it okay look at me now you put me to lift five ten pounds right no problem and then i'm not even built and you're telling me okay now you have to lift 200 pounds something has to give right the same thing goes with the engines if you want to boost an engine up you know and you want to keep it stock stock but boost it up well something has to give Unless you go the right avenues, you know, you build it from the ground up and you put all the expensive parts and you do the right things, you know, and then you boost it up and you increase the horsepower, yes, it will. But just think about it, the 6 liter, let's just talk about the 6 liter power stroke, is it a good engine? For sure it is, you know, some people might say otherwise, but I tell you, if you don't boost that engine up and you do the, use the correct oil you know you put fuel additive in it use a stiction modifier you know you watch make sure that the oil temperature is in sync with the coolant temperature you are never gonna have a problem the same goes for every different other engines too if you don't monitor all this you never know if you run low fuel pressure in the, through your power stroke or even through your cummins and all that you don't monitor your fuel you never gonna know that you're running low fuel pressure and that's how problems arise and that's how you are gonna destroy you know your injectors or even your engine so simple is that you know so okay, just thanks. let me know if uh, this was something that uh, you wanted to hear if not just send me an email and uh, 
tell me your uh, real question about the 6.4 and uh, I, I will be more than happy to elaborate there. Okay, next one is from Julianne, 2912. When Chrome gets all his parts, how long will it take for you to put his new engine back together? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let me just say something here. Okay, if if we wouldn't have to do any body work and anything like that, sheet metal and all that kind of stuff, everything would be perfect. Just put the engine back in and all that. Probably a couple of days, you know, to set everything up. But you guys have to remember, he ordered a whole bunch of uh, sheet metal, wheel wells, front grills and all that. So we have to strip all that down, you know, so that's going to take time. You know, drill out all the spot welds, take all that rusted thing out, treat the frame, make everything beautiful, put new body mounts on, and then put the new pieces back, make sure you line everything up, you know, vertically and horizontally, and you know, they are nice and squared up, and everything, uh, all the bolts can go into where it's supposed to, and then we retack everything, and then just, you know, prime it, paint it, and, you know, put the the seal on the joint seals and all that kind of stuff. And then when all that is done, obviously we're gonna put the brand new engine in, you know, but obviously we need to do a little bit of modifications there to a few things, tweak it here and there. And then, yeah, it should be all up and running. So. Who knows, I mean like, you know, I could be one week or two weeks, all depends how difficult, how easy things gonna come apart when we take all the body and the sheet metal and all that kind of stuff down. I hope this answers your question. Anyway, you probably gonna find out in the later videos how exactly things are going, you know. Okay, from Shane Augusto. In my band, if I only get hit once in a while for a few minutes at a time, then the rest of the time the air is cold. Does that mean I need a new thermostat? It has lots of engine fluid. Also, what is the best insulation to do in a band? Okay, so no that could be a few different problems okay the reason you might only get heat here and there for a couple of minutes and then cold air coming in it could be your heater core okay because what happens if the engine temperature it shows normal okay and you getting cold air coming in when you are on heat obviously there is your heater core has a little valve like a gate like opens allowed fluid to come into the heater core and then it blows hot air out now it could be a problem that your heater core the valve is not opening or getting stucky allows a little bit of fluid come in so that needs to be investigated i cannot tell you but obviously it it wouldn't be the thermostat because if it would be the thermostat you wouldn't have heat at all so it would show that your engine temperature, if it's normal operating, it's not down like cold, cold. That means the thermostat is working fine. But you know, it never hurts to change a thermostat. And that's a good practice. I suggest that, you know, every second year, you know, put a new thermostat in, check the coolant situation, the quality of the coolant, drop the coolant, put new coolant in is cheaper than uh, replacing an engine. That's my two cents. I hope this answered your question, my friend. It's okay, sweetie. Just do whatever you need to do. Bring me the tea, I know. if you don't mind. No, I am still preparing it. Ah, uh, that one is green tea, rice green tea. Do you still want me to add some honey? Hmm? Do you still want me to add some honey? Yes, please. Okay. Oh, 
Video Cancer Susie. Award the diesel heater. Who? Did you already uh, reach out this one? No, I don't know that. From Susie Gilmet. Hi Lauren, hope oh, you had a beautiful day. I have a problem with a diesel heater. She, do you know someone who can help me to fix it? I'm in Langley area. You answered me. Are you yeah, answered so, me okay. Okay, so that's that's what I'm saying. That's yeah, the that's one I was just saying see. that, yeah. you know, like you, you guys, please go in the description go scroll down on the bottom there is the email send me an email Susie I would really like to come and help you out set you up with a diesel heater no problem it's an easy fix you know like you know but if I don't know how to get in touch with you unfortunately right. I won't be able to help you you okay. know next is um, from Plin Sick 4363 just asking what do you think in your opinion is the best ambulance to convert into an RV or off-road camper and why? Well, there is no such a thing that best ambulance to build <coughs> into an RV or, you know, or off-road rig. It all depends the preferences, what body style you like, you know, because you can go out there and buy an ambulance like an F-series okay which is perfectly capable it's already four by four ready has a nice box on it you know and then you can go and build it from there but like i said you guys you know regardless what you buy if you buy chevy or if you buy ford because you know there is only a few options there in like mid-range sizes unless you want to go bigger you know but if you go bigger it's more fuel so you gotta look okay what's more fuel economical you know and uh, what size of box do you want but i say you know like i am a ford guy you know i really like ford and i like the e-series you know like i could have just go out there and when i bought my ambo i could have bought an f-series ambulance which is already four by four ready and it's good to go but I didn't like that long nose style. You know what I mean? I like more like the short stubby nose. That's why I picked the, the van, you know? And then, uh, yeah, it, it, it all depends preferences. You know, it's not one for everybody or one is the best and one is the worst, but they are all capable. It all depends how you dress them up when you get them. You know, you. and um, put in the floor. Yeah. It's hot. But yeah, you know, it all depends what you prefer. You prefer Chevy or you prefer Ford. You know, and then you know, if if you're looking for four by four, you know, there is different ways to skin things. Okay, there is some people say otherwise, but like I said you know if you can find an f-series for a reasonable good price let's say a 7.3 you'll be laughing you know because you have pretty much everything there you need because if you buy a van an ambulance you take it to somebody to convert it it can cost you up to 27 20 thousand dollars okay and that's just the 4x4 conversion. And then you have to build it on the inside. And trust me, you guys, it adds up pretty fast. Even, even if you do it yourself, like I did everything myself and it still costed me around forty-five to $50,000, just in parts. So, you know, and no labor because sometimes I work uh, till midnight in the summertime. I was, Leah was coming like, hey, come on, you're not coming in? Because things are not like, you know, you can go order and everything goes in there. No, you have to be creative, you have to, and then you look at it and you put it there and ah, it doesn't look good, so take it out and redo it. So there you have it. Hope this answers your question. Okay, and we have this. Chico and the van. 
Okay. Um, Chico in the van. Yeah. Chico in the van. Yeah. I have a zero point zero zero five E three fifty five point four V A three ton. Is mm -hmm. it how you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That sometimes cranks with hard start and sometimes cranks and doesn't start. Mm -hmm. Yesterday was the first time it had a start. Then drove it slowly for about five minutes and it stalled. But it started right up again and drove fine. And it started fine this morning. I always check battery and it's 12.5 volts all the time. I have new crankshaft, is it? Crankshaft sensor. Position yes. sensor. Yeah. Come shaft sensor and zero to upstream mm -hmm. sensor. I will be installing. Mm -hmm. Grounding wires look good. Fuel pressure is at 39. Fuel pump turns on when I turn key. I notice it does. If the if I don't drive for two to four days, any ideas? Oh, <laughs> you have in and out here. Oh, oh, you give him. Yeah. yeah. I think I answered. Oh that yeah, 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 yeah. You, it's really hard to yeah, yeah. diagnose something yeah. just from the you know because oh. it could be so many different things yeah. you know like. Oh yeah, you keep on you know, coming back and so, forth. Yeah. Oh. So. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Lucky seven ultra eight. How much does it cost to fill up your ammo? <laughs> <laughs> A uh, rice bike answer. Oh my God! Who's the rice bike? Uh, he keep he helping you to to answer some of the question. It seems that he always follow or watching your video. <laughs> he said that use free baby oil whenever possible. Then has to fill fill up as needed. If visiting Chrome in the island since it's too far away from his home fueling station. <laughs> yeah. So mm. let me say something here. Thank you, Rice Bike. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Rice Bike. I yeah. appreciate that, my friend. Yeah, he always answers some of the questions. Yeah, you know. So if you miss it, uh, my yeah. tank, I believe it's about two hundred and seventy-five liters. That's my diesel tank because I have two, and then I have a waste vegetable oil tank, which is two hundred liters. Okay. So if I have to, if I would just run on diesel and I fill up my tank, 250 liters would have cost me somewhere in the $500 neighborhood, okay? And best I got out of this guy, I believe it's about 18 liters. 70 liters per 100 kilometer. So just think about it. I need a 170 liters for each thousand kilometers. So 250 liters gives me good range. But most of the time, like if I'm just running in town, I will never run on vegetable oil. I would always run on diesel because it doesn't make sense. You know, but if I'm hitting like the road and let's say I'm driving from here to Nanaimo or from here to Kamloops or I go down to Oregon, obviously, yes, I fill up my uh, veggie tank 200 liters and sometimes I carry an extra 200 liters with me. And like I said, you know, like 200 liters gives me a thousand kilometers. So if I have 400 liters of uh, veggie, there you go, you know, it's about 2,500 2, kilometers. Now, how many times I fill up my diesel tank? Uh, in the summertime, maybe once, but in the winter time more often, because I always start on diesel and I always finish on diesel. And then I have my diesel heater, sometimes I run the diesel heater for like 12 hours. A day and yeah it doesn't use this a whole lot but two three liters here and then you know starting up and running the truck for 10 15 minutes until it fully heats up the engine and then when you shut it off you perch out of the vegetable oil and you have to run it again so in the winter time more often maybe you know every second or third month I have to you know 
pumping maybe $150, $200, but just about it. Hope this answered your question. Tony Pass3985. Thanks again, Rice Bai. It seems that he's really keep on track on you. Because that's awesome. I love yeah, it. Because he answered his question, but you can elaborate, okay? Where did you get your mechanical experience? Is it safe to run cooking oils on the diesel? Are you running a tuner in your bands? What running gears do you have? Thank you, Loli. This okay. one is from Tony Pass. And here's the rice bike answer. <laughs> Thank Let's you, rice bike. Okay. It. He has a home veggie station process that is in the earlier videos. So it means he's following yes, you. Yes, that's good. Okay? I like that. So do you know him? No. Yeah. I would oh, love okay. to meet him. Basically, let the sediment settle, filter, and heat up to make it easier to run it in the diesel. Correct. I guess during colder weather, make sure it doesn't gel up. Yes, so it's very important for sure, guys. And that's why I'm saying I always collect my vegetable oil from the Japanese sushi places because it's the cleanest oil and no animal fat. And I can show it to you guys. I can pour the oil that I run it through my centrifuge into a can and I can put it in the freezer for 48 hours and it's still liquid. That's very, very important because if you take oil from a, a, a pub where they fry chicken, other stuff in it, I guarantee you, <laughs> I guarantee you that that thing is become marmalade in the winter time. <laughs> Imagine that one time, you know, my friend asking us, hey, come here in North Bend and pick it up the oil. Yeah. We have a lots of oil, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh my holy! It was fat. It it's was a, grease. Yeah. It's, a, it's grease. I said, I can't use this. How can you know, you because what they what they do, they fry uh, pork. You know, pork belly and all that. They fry it there, and obviously, all that goes in. When it's hot, it's perfect. But when it cools down, it becomes lard. Right? You can't run that. I would never run that in my system, you know. My oil is so good that, that I, I, I would, I, I could cook with it, my friends. Okay, if I put it in a jar, you you say, oh no, that's brand new oil. Yeah. Because I'm picky. That's why I only have a couple. I dropped a lots of restaurants. I only have two sushi places, but they supply me a lots of oil that I can't even burn it. So there you have it. What was the other thing? that uh, he was asking um, oh if it's safe to run on diesel yeah you know but you ha have to make sure yeah. that you have dual system yeah, dual yeah. tank you always start on diesel you always finish on diesel you want to flash all the all the injectors all everything out of the system you don't want to mix the two fuels you don't want to contaminate them it's very very critical you know you do that no problem i mean look i've been running oil since 2010 no 11 2012 yeah when we go to that's the first time that we converted it when we go to black stuff no but we went to 2011 to 2011 yeah, we or 2012? Went, yeah. no oh, 2011 more 11, 2011 11, yes. yeah, 2011 yeah, yeah. To more so yeah. since 2011 and that time the diesel fuel was really cheap you know i didn't do it for the money that time because i was just kind of like trying to reuse reduce recycle be like you know better for the environment because it doesn't pollute as diesel you know it's much cleaner uh, you know when you run the vegetable oil right for the for the environment that's how i got into it and then you know after that you know more and more and you know that's why i'm even running on my six liter and it's no problem i mean i've been running on my uh, six liter ever since i got it i think four years now something like that no issues no issues but like i said you have to do the right thing if you do the right thing, just like a human body, you know, if you neglect your body, if you don't give food, if you don't give drink and all that kind of stuff, your body breaks down too. The vehicles, same thing. You're preaching them. 
I'm going to preach you as well that in the morning, you have to take your breakfast, not the coffee. Okay? <laughs> Did you hear, guys? Okay. I, 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 I. okay. Okay. Hey, the other question is, in your bench, what running gears do you have? That is from Tony Fass as well. I run 14 gears. Okay. And uh, I tell you, 14, it's pretty good for the tires as I'm running now. Uh, I tell you for a few reasons. Yes, weight, it's almost there. 430 would be perfect for my weight and for my tire size. But because my ambo came with 410 in the rear, I put 410 in the front and I didn't want to change all that out because that would add up more to the price tag. But 410 does good. It's a little bit slower on the big heels if I tow, but if I just run the ambo on himself with no towing, nothing behind it, I can cruise any heel up one, 100, around 23, 24 RPM, and it's just rocking, you know? So there you have it. From Deborah Walker, I think we already answered this question. How long you've been married? <laughs> I have no idea. Sidi, <laughs> okay. why don't you come and sit beside me? I'm still waiting for my tea. It's too hot for me. Just bring the tea here, Sidi, and sit down because it's no good. Huh? Oh my God. Rice bike is keep on answering. Thank you, Rice bike. So Cody McRae have a question in regards to, do you know about Bortec 5.7 liter? My 2002 GMC Savannah, 3,500 runs great. Mm -hmm. Has 333,000 kilometer? Is it Miles probably okay. because it's, it's maybe. Okay, it's spring and summer time, it is starts without hesitation. Mm -hmm. As soon as it gets to zero degrees centigrade and colder, it has a hard start. Turn the key and let the fuel pump prime and turn the key to start. And it turns over and turns over without starting. Have to cycle the key up and on like 10 minutes and it will usually start then. Any idea? Can make a video if you need. Thanks. <laughs> okay, so. here you go. Hold on. Rice bike. Answer this. It start with the battery. How old is it? Date, code, sticker, and load testing to see how worn it is. Mm -hmm. CCA drops as it gets older. Correct. In my area, oh, he's from the USA Auto Zone or similar parts store. Do it for free in the parking lot. Yeah, they can run a test because mm -hmm. they can figure it out what's wrong because just by the description, you can really pinpoint to say that, oh yeah, 100% is this. It could be many different things, you know, because and in a gas engine to have that kind of issue that you have to prime, you obviously, you, you, you lose fuel pressure. And that's why you have to cycle the key so many times and takes 10 minutes to fire it up. Because if you don't lose fuel pressure, look you guys, everything is so simple, you know. You have the injector, you have the spark plug, okay? Now, the ECU commands the injector to inject and the spark plug in the same time gives the spark, well, there is the fire, okay? Pushes the cylinder down and bam, it's running. No, that's right. Now, if you don't have, if you don't have fuel, or the spark plugs are uh, a shitty quality, sorry for the language, then obviously in the summertime it's easy to fire, but in the winter time, if the spark is not perfect and the injection is not in the same in time, well, that's that's what happens, you know. But that's just you know in hindsight, right? Because without running the test and see what's going on, you know, I mean, could be bad injectors, could be no fuel, you know, you're losing the fuel pressure and all that kind of stuff, right? But they are keep on, you know, exchanging conversation, okay? It's a two-year-old 
1200 CCA battery. No corrosion on any terminals. Grounds are all good. This is my 3-Ed printer with a band and every year it's the same. It starts amazing when it's plus 5 mm -hmm. centigrade outside and as soon as it drops less than, it just cranks and cranks and cranks unless I cycle the key a bunch of times. Makes for fun times when it's negative 45 centigrade outside. Ha <laughs> ha! Okay, rice bike answer him. Cody, can you give me the brand of that uh, 1200 CCA battery? Never heard a 65 group series that high. And sometimes they fail. I had a AGM battery from Oh Champion. yeah, it, it could be a six yeah. month yeah. Uh, old battery and yeah. could fail. You know, like you have the voltage, but you don't have the cranking power. So you can have 12.5 uh, or 13 volts, but doesn't have the cranking power it's no good i mean like and that's it that's all you got but like i said you know it's more to than just the battery or a bad ground you know because if you would have a bad ground you would have a bad ground in the summertime too but like i said could be because it's in the cold colder weather it loses the fuel pressure you know air gets in and that's why he has to cycle the key so many times and crank it to fire it up you know because like i said if you had the fuel pressure there in the injectors it's gonna be good we're all good Thank we you. answer all those questions well come here sweetie come on darling come on let's close this one right now right here let's do this come on let's send the big love to the aloha country you know, to the Hawaiian friends mm -hmm. and to my German friends. Who's German? What is his name? Raz! Hey, Raz! And then... That's ba my... No... no Backroad back back road nomads. nomads. Backroad yeah. nomads. Yeah, yeah. You and, know? Yeah. I send love to every one yeah, of you guys, of every you, single yeah. one of my subscription, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. it doesn't matter good or bad, I don't judge nobody, you can put a bad comment, yeah. I might tolerate it once, <laughs> you can put a bad comment, I may tolerate it twice, yeah. mm. but after that I'm gonna lock you up in the basement, <laughs> see you later, bye bye, bye. You know? thank you so much for all the support and love, anyway my friends, I appreciate your love, you know, if you guys this deep in the video, much aloha to you. <laughs> but my friends, if you are new to the channel and you're not subscribed, well, please consider subscribing, that will help us a lot. And I just want to make a quick elaboration, you know, like, I know you guys, I've been reading some of your comments that you telling me that this is becoming a shopping channel. No, no. <laughs> it is not a shopping channel, okay? And if I show you guys a product, I am not putting it up there because I want you guys to buy it or I'm selling it. I'm just giving you an opportunity to learn the different products, the different brands, what they can do. If you building something, you know, just consider prices, quality, and the capacity, what it can do, you know? That's all I'm doing. But I'm gonna cut it all out. I'm not gonna show you guys <laughs> nothing anymore, okay? Because obviously some of you guys cannot take the heat, you know? And you think that I'm taking everything because you know, like I just wanna know. I'm only taking stuff that I really enjoy. I'm 100% confident before I ask them to send it, I do and I check other people, what they did, what they review, and what kind of tests they run on it. And if I am happy with that, I'll say, send it out. And I'll test it myself, and if I'm not happy, I ship it back. I That's never put it on the channel, so. But anyway, from now on, you guys see nothing from me. <laughs> Peace out. <laughs> That's it, Annie? Okay. okay. That's it. That's Shut it. the door. <laughs>